Snapdragon X Elite. The Snapdragon X Elite Kyle. X Elite chip. Snapdragon X Elite. You might have heard about this chip recently. Well, get ready because Snapdragon X Elite is about to be a household name. Whispers of this chip first surfaced a few months ago, and I was pretty excited. Made a couple of videos about it. Why? Okay, okay. Here's the deal. I just took a couple of flights with my MacBook Pro. It's got Apple Silicon in it. And my absolute favorite thing, hands down, is that I can use this thing on a five hour flight to San Diego, doing heavy things like a bit of software development. Well, that's not the super heavy thing. I did some of that, but I also did video editing on the plane. I used the laptop unplugged while waiting for my plane on the flight and still had plenty of power left over. Hello, I have a reservation. Max? Oh, what's hey, up, hey, 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 In case you're not aware, the Apple Silicon chip in the new Apple laptops and desktops, they're all ARM-based architecture, which I explained pretty well in this Fireship video right up here. I'll link to it down below too. Well, Snapdragon X Elite will do for PC laptops what Apple did for MacBooks. And this will enable a next generation of laptops to be ultra efficient, long lasting, and deliver enough power and performance to rival Apple, whose Apple Silicon chips have been setting new records in power and efficiency metrics for a few years now. Imagine using a Windows or Linux laptop for 10 to 12 hours without plugging it in. Ah. If you have a PC, how long does it last unplugged? Let me know in the comments down below. Just curious to see. Now the XLE chip specifically is a result of years of work at Qualcomm after its acquisition of Nuvia, a company founded by ex-Apple engineers who worked on Apple Silicon and Apple. This Silicon pedigree is already showing improvements in leaps and bounds from its Geekbench scores to Cinebench scores, but it's not just benchmarks that I personally got to see last week firsthand at Qualcomm's headquarters in San Diego. Along with this neat Snapdragon powered concept car, not really related, but I thought I'd show it here anyway. It's pretty cool. I also got to see some rigorous testing of the XLE chip itself, being exposed to crazy temperature variations under heavy load, used in facial recognition and other AI applications like real-time voice to text transcription and translation. You see, as I talk, the iModel is running using the MPU. Pretty cool stuff. But I also got to see the 23 watt version of the chip in reference laptops. This chip runs from 23 watts to 80 watts. So this was the lower end wattage because it was running against the Intel Ultra 7 155H to make things equal. This was for various tasks. They ranged from AI to video processing to gaming to something us developers will appreciate, code compilation and browser benchmarks like uh, Jetstream, Speedometer 2.1 and Speedometer 3. 3.0. The X Elite absolutely smashed the Intel chip in every single test. And I was really glad to see the NPU or the neural processing unit taking over a lot of the AI related work. So using Qualcomm's AI libraries, you're able to target whether you want to run things on the CPU, on the GPU, or on the NPU. And targeting the NPU will be important for on device LLMs, code generation, stable diffusion, even immediately practical applications like magic masking and DaVinci Resolve. Now granted, these tests were kind of cherry picked to showcase the best scenarios, but there was enough variability in the tasks to demonstrate how capable this chip really is. So until I get my hands and fingers on the new machines myself, I have a bit of skepticism about the tests that are cherry picked, especially since we couldn't run our own test during the tour and presentation. This is Schwarzenegger 2.0. I should have just... Ah. If you want to see my unbiased tests when I get these laptops, hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything, but it helps me out a ton. Thanks. And by the way, this was X Elite running at just 23 watts. It can go up to 80 watts on the high end. Of course, running at 80 watts will have its own challenges and laptop manufacturers will need to provide a chassis that is well calibrated with a good thermal profile for the power they're gonna run through that chip. In other words, probably more fans. And just as a reminder, the X Elite has 11 performance cores and no efficiency cores, which is being attributed to the excellence in the chip's dynamic design. In plain English, it's my understanding that the X Elite 
doesn't need efficiency cores because its performance cores can handle efficient tasks based on what's required. But I'm going to reserve the conclusion until after I've done my own tests, which hopefully will be sometime in the next few months. Linux users will immediately start taking advantage of these laptops when they start appearing on the market because Linux for ARM has been around for a while. As for Windows, Microsoft has been steadily moving in the ARM direction lately. Visual Studio and .NET take full advantage of the ARM architecture and it shows in my tests. I'll link to some of those videos down below. Microsoft even released a pretty powerful desktop mini PC called Volterra, or also known by its official boring name, Windows Dev Kit 2023, which I covered here and compared it to the Mac mini in a few videos. Microsoft, just a little request, please keep the cool names of your products. Here's some suggestions. Kyoto, Cusco, Sedona, or Ravello. Take note, Microsoft. The Volterra box had Snapdragon 8C Gen 3 in it, and the Snapdragon X Elite is multiple times the power. So it'll be really nice to see a new box, but the topology of the chips are completely different, so you won't be able to just swap the chip. It's gonna have to be a brand new machine with a new motherboard and circuitry and so on. So this will not only enable developers to start crunching away and making ARM versions of their software, but it'll enable consumers to finally start using the more efficient versions of Windows and software for Windows. Even Google gave in and finally released Chrome for Windows for ARM. And this was just in a matter of a few months. The developer community around Windows for ARM is still relatively small, but it's growing. Leaders like Jeremy Sinclair, who is a Microsoft Windows developer MVP, added ARM support to Power Toys and a ton of other software and tools. Definitely check out his Twitter profile, which I'll link down below, because he's constantly covering the cutting edge of Windows and .NET development. And while you're on Twitter, give me a follow too, as I post updates and behind the scenes on there. Now, if you want to know more about the background of this chip, watch this video next, or for recent benchmark leaks, watch watch this video next. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.